The Thor franchise is about to heat up with a whole new generation of superhero Thunder God action. This time, Natalie Portman's Jane Foster is going to take up Mjolnir and save the world. And that's just the beginning, though. Oh, my God. The Mighty Thor will likely be here to stay for a long time. So how could she possibly compete with someone as cool as Chris Hemsworth? By taking on the Devourer of Worlds himself, Galactus. So far, we still don't know all that much about Thor Love and Thunder. I would be annoyed by that, but we still don't know much about Black Widow or the Eternals, even though both were supposed to have come out by now. What we can figure out is roughly how it will end. Somehow Jane will get a hold of Mjolnir, despite the fact that Hela busted it up in Ragnarok. Everyone had to get new hobbies in 2020. Maybe she got some super glue and rebuilt the hammer piece by piece. She'll then go on an adventure with Thor, Valkyrie, Star-Lord, and Lady Sif, the only one of Thor's friends to not get skewered in Ragnarok. Marvel also just announced like 5,000 new projects across the big screen in Disney+. Plus. I'm pretty sure they're one week away from announcing a show based around Happy Hogan. It would be like Cash Cab, only with him driving around superheroes for 30 minutes. One of the official projects is the latest attempt at making a Fantastic Four movie that doesn't suck. If Marvel really wanted to do better than the last two franchise attempts, they could start by introducing a comic-accurate version of Galactus. Not that weird floaty cloud thing from Rise of the Silver Surfer. It's gotta have that big old purple hat, you know? If the Fantastic Four film follows the comic story of Galactus, the team will beat him by separating his herald, the Silver Surfer, from him. Then they'll have a big superhero team up to send Galactus packing before he has a chance to make a meal out of the planet Earth. That would leave an opening for Galactus's herald. It would also leave an opening for Marvel to adapt the single coolest thing that has happened in the comics in the last few years, something that would directly involve the new Thor. The Jason Aaron Thor arc pretty much redefined the character for a whole generation. It introduced the Jane Foster Mighty Thor, the end of the World King Thor, and Gore the God Butcher. Seeing as how Natalie Portman's Mighty Thor and Christian Bale's God Butcher Gore will be in Thor Love and Thunder, I think it's safe to say that Jason Aaron should basically get a writing credit. Though Taika Waititi doesn't seem like the share credit kind of dude. After Love and Thunder, they're going to run out of material. I highly doubt they can do War of the Realms, because that plotline is all about Malekith from the Dark World, and he was the worst. That means that they are going to have to move on to the Donny Cates run. The newest Thor arc starts off with a real bang as Thor is brought into conflict with Galactus. It turns out that there's an even bigger threat known as the Black Winter out there and it could consume the entire universe, Galactus included. To combat this threat, Galactus enlists Thor to be his brandy new herald, so that he can consume enough planets to fight the Black Winter off. It's an interesting ethical dilemma, and one that would make for a great movie plot. Perhaps Jane's contact with the Aether makes her a more suitable herald than anybody else. Also, think about Dr. Jane Foster as a character outside of Thor as well. The ethical dilemma of watching an astrophysicist forced to pick fascinating planets for a monster to consume sounds pretty great. The inner conflict would be almost as exciting as watching Galactus eat an entire planet filled with sentient life while Jane desperately tries to save as many as she can. Okay, maybe those wouldn't be quite as exciting as the other. They could even tie the Black Winter into the whole the universe used to be nothing but darkness thing from the Dark World, but that would have to reference Malekith, and as I said before, he's the worst! So if you're wondering how that Thor and Galactus road trip through the stars goes, boy am I excited to tell you because it was awesome. At a certain point, the alliance between Thor and the Planet Eater came to a head. It ended with him actually obliterating Galactus in a truly metal display of Norse god power. He then topped it all off by making Galactus's helmet the entrance to his castle in Asgard. Yeah, that's the coolest thing ever. Like, it, it tops Thor's entrance to Wakanda in Infinity War cool. As awesome as Chris Hemsworth was, they've got to top it somehow. Weirdly enough, I think Jane's version of this confrontation could be even greater than the comic book version. While Thor taking down Galactus was cool, it was based around weird comic book logic. Jane Foster is a world-renowned astrophysicist. It's entirely possible that she could use science to figure out precisely how to defeat both Galactus and the Black Winter. It'd be interesting to see her have a beautiful mind-style sequence where Jane Foster has a whiteboard with the words how to beat up Galactus written in dry erase marker above equations. She can even enlist her buddies Dr. Eric Selvig and Darcy Lewis to help her. No matter which way they go, I am super stoked for seeing Natalie Portman thaw it up for years to come. You know the superhero rule as well. If they meet, they gotta fight. 
so we will almost definitely see her fight Captain Marvel at some point, which will be the coolest thing ever. All of this is fun and all, but they have got to have the Mighty Thor crossover with Loki at some point. If you've got your own ideas about the new Thor, drop us a comment and don't forget to like and subscribe for more from CBR. And as always, thanks a lot for watching.